Okay, today we'd like to welcome to the podcast, Dennis Guzzi. He's a trusted business professional and a successful problem solver with expertise in business strategy, financial reporting, budgeting, and forecasting. That's a lot of words about numbers. It is. <laughs> Operations improvement. Oh, geez. Oh, rule number one. <laughs> <laughs> We can start over. I am so sorry. <laughs> How did I not remember that one? <laughs> Fine. Do you want to start over? Okay, and we go. Uh, operations man improvement and small business growth. He is an initiator of new processes, and he is passionate about training, learning new new ideas, and developing individuals. He's the owner of American Business Advisors with three locations. Is that right? Uh. Yes and no. We oh. have offices in other states as okay. well, yes. Which was founded in 1984 and is celebrating 34, 35 years of serving small and mid-sized businesses across the U.S. That's awesome. Well, thank you for coming. You're very welcome. I'd let, want having. to pick your brain about all these number words. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> all right. So my first question is always the same. What was your first job and what did you want to be when you grew up? What was my first job and what did I want to be when I grew up? Well, um... From a very young age, <clears throat> I was born and raised on a family farm, mm -hmm. first of all. So that was my first job, though it wasn't paid. And <laughs> in fact, it's really funny because my dad would always ask me, so what do you think about this or what do you think about that? And I, my common response to my dad was always, well, I don't get paid enough to think. <laughs> so I love the fact that now people pay me to think. There you go. It's just like ironic, mm -hmm. but beautiful. <laughs> um, but that was kind of my first job. Um, I would say that I was really industrious as a kid. Mm -hmm. And so by the time I was... I don't know, eight, 10 years old, I was actually making um, wooden knickknacks, uh, cutting them out, painting them, all that kind of fun stuff, and really enjoyed the hands-on thing <laughs> and started my own little business selling wooden knickknacks. I love it. It comes back around. It does. So is that what you wanted to do? Be a carpenter? No. Um, you know, I changed career modes throughout uh, throughout my life many mm -hmm. times. And when I was real young, I wanted to, you know, be an astronaut and fly to the moon. And I, I have it. horrible vision, so they would <laughs> never send me to the moon. I can't even be, be a pilot. I, I can't. I, I realized that. I was like, I can't even fly in a fighter jet because I've got too horrible a vision. Now, of course, you know, they got LASIK surgery mm -hmm. and all that that fixes that. But um, back then, that was what I wanted to do. And then I went through a phase where I wanted to be an architect. Because oh. I really got into like shapes and designs and architectural um, mm -hmm. structures and still love that. It's still kind of a fun passion. I sketch out things all the time and um, that's kind of neat. You can draw. <laughs> I can uh, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot draw. I can, I can draw a doghouse and build it, right? That's, that's, that's really <laughs> funny. My kids are always like, mommy always draw the same, same kind of flowers. I'm like, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> I can draw a really nice pig. I'll show you a pig later <laughs> That'd on. That'd be awesome. <laughs> um, and then I went through a phase, uh, particularly in college, where I thought, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be an attorney someday. And um, that was that was kind of a fun time because I really like dug into, mm -hmm. you know, law and, and, and business and stuff. And it was interesting just how my career progressed. Um, I was wanting to go back into the small business arena mm -hmm. and be able to serve small and mid-sized businesses mm -hmm. um, has always kind of been a key focus of mine. But for some odd reason, I had this desire to climb the corporate ladder first. Yeah, so, I have a question about that. Yeah. And how that came about and, you know, how you got there and what tools, um, what tools, you know, were created in that for you. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I was always kind of an initiator. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I did in college, the Schwann Food Company was located, corporate headquarters located in the university town that mm -hmm. I went to school. And they were giving a bunch of money to a geographical information systems lab. Mm -hmm. And so I self-taught myself how to use geographical information systems and technology oh, wow. to improve operations for marketing purposes for just a variety of different things. And I approached the Schwann Food Company and said, are you guys using this for operations efficiency improvements inside the business? Mm -hmm. And they said, no, but we'd love to. Do you want to join us? And so as a you know 20 year old, whatever it was, um, I went to them, got a job without even really interviewing because they're just like, yeah, join our team and, and help us to develop a department. And so I helped them develop a department. We rolled it out across the nation. We initially used it for um, mapping and routing uh, the, the little yellow trucks that you see go mm -hmm. to door, door, door to door. Mm -hmm. And um, then we rolled it out to marketing, demographics, you know, ideal customers, um, mm -hmm. times a day that 
you know, customers are home, et cetera. And then we took it to a larger strategy plan of where do we place warehouses and facilities and um, how are we going to really, you know, drive product to the, the customers. Um, and so that was that was really fun because it was initiating new processes and new ways of creative ways of solving problems. I love it. Yeah. I'm super process oriented too. So it's like, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and I just love like doing things that are new and, and outside the box and, mm-hmm. and helping people to solve challenges. That's awesome. So you have a you have a major in finance. Um, and then so what prompted your move from with the corporate world um, to consulting with mid and so you said that you're just you just love mid and small size businesses. And sure. so you were just like, I'm done with the corporate world. Sure. So I'll fill in the rest of the. Yeah. The, Give me a gap. Give me there. a blank so, there. Um, with the Schwann Food Company, I was originally in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I I came to Colorado, fell in love with it, and I said, I'm going to live here. And so I basically asked the Schwann Food Company to transfer me out here, worked in region office. It grew, mm-hmm. um, and then it, it actually split, and we put region offices in Missouri and California. Mm-hmm. And then um, our region office basically shut down, and it was myself as a finance director and an admin that were left. And so I found a new position with CH2M Hill, mm-hmm. um, and I climbed the corporate ladder in finance there as well um, before uh, ultimately deciding that I wanted to go and serve small and mid-sized businesses because um, I had about 15 years of corporate experience and just wanted to um, go and, 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 like I said, go back to my roots of small and mid-sized bring business. Back. And, bring and back. And bring it right passion. back. So taking best business practices from mm-hmm. corporate world mm-hmm. and trying to apply it to small and mid-sized businesses. And and let me tell you, there is a huge difference between corporate Absolutely. and between small and mid-sized business. Mm-hmm. Small and mid-sized businesses are always focused on, you know, trying to make payroll, trying to make sure that, you know, just in time everything, mm-hmm. right? Um, corporations have a little bit more flex to them. They've probably got a little bit of extra cash laying around to mm-hmm. be able to cover, um, you know, certain things. And just the economies of scale that they can gain mm-hmm. um, versus the small and mid-sized businesses that are out there just pounding away every day, um, you know, it trying to so make it. <laughs> it. It is very hard. And and so I really have great respect um, for those people that mm-hmm. own and operate small and mid-sized businesses. So how did you get started with, um, with ABA? So American Business Advisors in 2014, I basically found them on the website mm-hmm. and said, I love the the mission statement. Mm-hmm. I love what they're doing mm-hmm. and I want to approach them and, and see if I can join. And so I approached American Business Advisors um, founder and owner at the time, Bob Benson, and said, I'd like to join as a partner and, and start serving small businesses. Mm-hmm. And that was creative because most people come to them with a resume and say, I want to work for you. You're right. Very few people say, I want to be a partner and I own like a business. To, I'd like to right? own this business. What, what, <laughs> what can I do? To... How, how, do I, how do I make that happen? I love it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, did I forget to tell you? I, I like initiate things. Yeah. I like to, yeah. I like your initiative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah, the initiator exactly. dish. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's how it all got started. We were in discussions. Um, I came in in 2015, bought in as a partner. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's it's been a great business. Uh, see a lot of interesting businesses get to solve a lot of really interesting challenges and um, create solutions and um, and frankly there's no uh, I say create solutions Mm -hmm. but there's no real solutions that are ever created it's Mm -hmm. just application of various different ideas that are already out there to the situations that are involved Mm -hmm. and because I get to see so many different businesses um, I get to say okay well this is what works really well in this Mm -hmm. type of a business Mm -hmm. Let's see if it can work in this business as well. That's awesome. So can you give me a quick rundown of um, the services you guys provide for businesses and their owners? Yeah, absolutely. So American Business Advisors, um, we focus on, um, we're full service developmental consultants. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we're in the business of being in business. We understand all aspects of business. And so we have consultants that work on a variety of different things from strategy planning Mm -hmm. and big vision, big picture kind of visioning. to putting action steps in place, et cetera. Uh, the financial arena, there's a lot of small and mid-sized business owners who don't necessarily understand their finances. Maybe they're doing bookkeeping for the sake of keeping track of their, their bank account and then filing to. taxes, mm-hmm. right? That's all they use it for. Mm-hmm. But the reality is a business is telling you a lot of information mm-hmm. if you're willing to pay attention to it and understand what it's trying to tell you. And financial information is just one of those keys it's a gem. Mm-hmm. Um, I love it when eyes light up and they're like, 
whoa, I never really you know, thought my numbers could tell me that. <laughs> and, awesome. and you can see trends and you can see all kinds of fun things, right? Um, and so the financial piece is another big piece. We also help put leadership teams in place. Mm -hmm. So businesses that have grown to a point where maybe the owner can no longer manage the entire organization mm -hmm. and might need to start putting layers of management into the, the fold. Um, we're able to help them to establish that. What is a good operations manager? What is a good um, sales manager, et cetera? And how do we bring them into the team? Um, also, if they have existing teams that are in place, but they're feeling like the productivity isn't there with mm -hmm. them, um, how do you help them to cast vision for setting goals and for developing themselves personally, organization, time management, all that kind of stuff? Oh, wow. Um, to be able to really help propel the teams that are there. It's amazing. Um, and, and gain extra efficiencies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from an operation standpoint, we help put systems in place. Um, and so, you know, maybe a, a, a client doesn't have an onboarding process mm -hmm. for how do new clients come into the system. Mm -hmm. And every time they do it, it's kind of haphazard. Oh, we missed this. Oh, next time let's try to remember that. Mm -hmm. And and they forget that really onboarding could be a simple process. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is outline it and say, okay, did we check all the boxes as we we're going through onboarding this client? Yeah. Um, and it, it's an easy process. It makes sense. It's repeatable. Mm -hmm. And so you put it into place and it saves a lot of time. Um, and so we help with a lot of those kinds of operations things. Um, from a sales marketing standpoint, we utilize one of the top 20 sales programs in the nation. Mm -hmm. And so we help to develop salespeople. Um, marketing, it's helping to find that niche in the market. What's the differentiators? Mm -hmm. What are the core competencies that you offer in your product or service? Um, so all those different kinds of things. Really, it's the business of being in business. How do we move them to the next level? I love it. I love it. So what do you find is the greatest need most small and mid-sized mid business owners need? Time. Time, right? <laughs> one, one word answer. Time, well, time and money, right? Time and money. It's always that time and money answer, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's, I mean, most business, and, and that's interesting that, that it is time and money because mm -hmm. American business advisors, are our two catchphrases are um, building cash cows, improving quality of life. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's time and money. Mm -hmm. um, building a cash cow that has sustainable, repeatable revenues that are generating profits and dropping to the bottom line that will enhance future growth of the organization or mm -hmm. allow you to do investments in other um, ancillary pieces that you can bring into the business um, or, or use for personal spending and, and so forth. And then the quality of time piece is how do you get your life back? Um, a lot of times what happens to small businesses is they they start growing and organically the business just starts to consume them mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they're like well i used to have nights and weekends i used to have family time i used to but i don't and so how do we help them gain that quality time back it's huge um, it is huge it is absolutely huge and um so time is a big factor yes. for small business owners it's very interesting i have um just this you know these small business owners are just you know i work six days a week mm -hmm. you know six to eight or whatever mm -hmm. and i'm just like okay <laughs> like <laughs> how do what is like the one thing we can change for you right and sometimes it's like you just upped your price by 20 percent. now you have all this time mm -hmm. you know you're making the same amount of money but now you have more hours or whatever it's just very Absolutely. interesting because sometimes it's a simple fix yeah like you could just raise prices oh yeah okay or, or prioritization of things. Absolutely. I mean, there are so many urgent things that have to get done, right? <laughs> the tyranny of that, the urgent. <laughs> exactly. But if they don't get done, are they really that, that important? That important? They're, I mean, they might be urgent, but they're not that important. Um, and so, yeah, that's another key. Yeah, teaching people ur urgent versus important. Mm -hmm. It's very, I, even I go, wait, urgent or important? Okay, just step back, go do that thing I, that is important, and then we'll come back. So can you give me an example of a success story with one of the businesses you've worked with? Um, sure, I have lots of success stories. Do you wanna maybe focus that a little bit more? What kind of success story <laughs> um, are you looking for? <laughs> so I would like to, you know, one where, you know, the business owner was probably just running around like a chicken with their head cut off. You know, okay. the guys were able to come in and implement what you do and give them, you know, some clarity sure. around their business, but also some time and some breathing room. Sure. Because I think that's, really where most small business yep. owners are. Yep, I've, I've got a great example for that. Um, I've got a client where um, the, the client has been doing really well, the business has been around for about 10 years, mm -hmm. and I've been working with them for about two years now, I think. And um, 
one of the key things in there is helping them to delegate tasks and, mm -hmm. and put in initial layers of that management team and to um, trust their employees to do things that they're very capable of doing, mm -hmm. um, but that the business owner has always done. Mm -hmm. And so why do you do things? Because you've always done them, right? Mm -hmm. How do you stop always doing them? You start to allow others to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you build that trust in others and see that, yeah, they're fully capable of it. Why am I doing this? And you allow them to do it. Um, another piece that we've done a very good job of with this um, particular client is uh, setting goals. Mm -hmm. And once you get this business owner onto his goals, like it happens, like it happens. Just you just way. have to help th with the focus, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like sunlight. You bend sunlight into a focus, you can burn right through anything. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with your goals. You, you focus your goals, you can burn right through and accomplish them. Um, you know, and, and it's interesting too. I, a definition of success that I really like is um, progressive realization of worthwhile predetermined goals. Mm -hmm. And that packs so much of a punch because success doesn't mean final achievement right, of goals. Right, there is no like... Right, it, success is progressive steps towards your goals, mm -hmm. right? And they have we to be worthwhile goals. You don't leap to success. You don't leap to success, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. you, you make slow but steady wins the race, right? You, you make those steps towards it. Um, and, and you wanna set your goals, mm -hmm. make sure that they're worthwhile, mm -hmm. that they're predetermined. Um, so you're not just shooting at anything because if you shoot at nothing, you'll hit it every time, right? <laughs> um, so setting those goals, mm -hmm. focusing and, and taking steps towards it and being successful in taking steps. Because that's how you move, gain momentum, right? That is exactly how you gain momentum. One step at a time. Yep. So can you give me, so you've worked with businesses where probably things didn't work out with probably their goals or what they wanted to do. Um, can you give me an example of a business that, that basically like the attempt failed to create success for them? And what were the big issues with either the business or the business owners? Yep. Just can you kind of like, you know, and how, either did you overcome those or was it just something that just didn't happen? Sure. Um, so one of them that I can think of that comes to mind immediately, um, we set action steps in place mm -hmm. and we had a very clear path for where we wanted to go. And once change started to happen inside the organization, um, the individual contributors, the employees really pushed back. Mm. And that was probably somewhat unexpected. Um, and, and so it actually ultimately hurt the individuals in the organization to the point where some of them just decided to leave, didn't want to participate in it. Oh, wow. Um, and so I would actually say that as you're working towards change and towards goals in the mm -hmm. organization, you have to be very keenly alert to culture inside the organization mm -hmm. and making sure that, um, yes, now you have changed your focus and mm -hmm. so you're able to accomplish great things. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't gotten the buy-in of the team, mm -hmm. if personalities of the team aren't meshing correctly mm -hmm. um, to help you achieve those goals that you want to have, um, you either need to figure out ways to bring them on board um, make changes more slowly mm -hmm. than what you want to do. Um, or frankly, it is appropriate to find the right team players. As you're growing an organization, people that were with you when it was a small organization are potentially, in, in most cases, not the same correct people for a larger organization. Makes a lot and, of sense. Yeah, and you have to just be okay with that mm -hmm. and aware of that. Yeah, they might not be ready for change or happy to do change. Exactly. You might have a culture of change and then you start changing things. Uh, like, what, like, <laughs> exactly. What is happening? Yep, yep, very much so. <laughs> That's really interesting. So did that in that in that example, did they bring on new employees or yep. did they just decide to stop because no, there was so much to, resistance? they had to bring on new employees. That's awesome um, that they yep. just pushed on through that. Yep. So it ended up being a success story. It did. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I awesome. mean, the, the goals ultimately were accomplished. It's just a matter of the team that originally started with wasn't the same team that they needed to accomplish the goals. That's so crazy. I just, I can see, you know, how people would just be like, no change. Well, and, and it's unfortunate because that's actually a lot of times why consultants get a bad you know, reputation mm -hmm. is because, oh no, there's a consultant. All of a sudden this change is going to happen, right? right? They're not going to pay attention to, to me or my needs. Right. Um, but it is a, it's a critical decision that a business owner needs to make. Are you going to stagnate 
be who you you are because you've always been that and mm-hmm. because you're you're not developing your team mm-hmm. or are you going to continually grow change and develop into what you want to become right um it's of course it's easier to sit on your laurels and to not do anything mm-hmm. but that which is hard is most often that which is best right and if you're doing that that work to get to those goals a lot of the time you're seeing positive culture changes and you know it's gonna be an amazing place to work at the end yep you know so holding on and being part of that you know and also you get to direct some of that if you're involved right yeah you can say yeah "Mm, maybe not this thing maybe this thing you know it's interesting because i've actually um had conversations with people on the other side Mm -hmm. the employees Mm -hmm. right and, um, you know, when some of them start to uh, feel apprehension towards the change, mm-hmm. um, that's exactly how I phrase it to them is, do you want to be a part of that change and influence that change? Or are you going to make a conscious decision that you don't even want to be a part of the change? And then, you know, you really shouldn't be a part of the organization because then you are the, the weak link that's holding them back. You will be left behind. You will be left behind. Wow, that's crazy. So what... Um... What has been your greatest successes in your business in building um, ABA? Um, sure, I, I think probably the, the greatest success, the thing that brings me the most joy mm-hmm. um, in it is seeing very satisfied clients and then having those clients like pass your name on mm-hmm. to other other people. Yeah, that's the best. Um, that is such an amazing feeling because you realize, okay, I don't know exactly how I helped you. Like <laughs> y- y- you analyze the whole situation. You're like, okay, yeah, these are the things that we did. Mm-hmm. Right. But somewhere along the line, you grasped onto something that you just really loved. Yeah. It really and resonated now you, with you. It mm-hmm. resonated with you. And now you want to share it with the rest of the world. And it just, that's amazing. Yeah, I love that too. What have been some of the biggest obstacles? Um, biggest obstacles. Y- you know, it's interesting. <clears throat> so, um, balancing traditional versus new ideas mm-hmm. right um is probably one of the biggest obstacles for me american business advisors has been around since 1984 mm-hmm. so we'll be celebrating 35 years this year um which is fantastic right it's an adult now it is, it is an adult <laughs> it's, it's now full adulting. <laughs> <laughs> um but in 35 years of history there's traditional ways of doing things mm-hmm. um, which are proven mm-hmm. by the way Um, But on the flip side, it's how do you embrace the traditional ways and change with the culture and the ways that things are are happening today? Participation Um, age. We talk about it all the time. Absolutely. And and business is it's still pretty much the same. The foundations are there, Mm -hmm. but the ways and means of doing it um, are becoming very different. And so you've got to be adaptable and flexible um, in order to do that. That's awesome. I love it. Just got to keep up. Yep. So before I ask my last question, um, where or what is the easiest way for people to find you? Um, so the easiest way for people to find me is on our website, mm-hmm. www.abadvisors.com. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'll link it in the description boxes. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, or if they want to reach out to me on my, my cell phone. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> <You> <laughs> I'll can, throw you it out can there. can if you really want to. It's up to you. Um, it's 303 303- Eight eight zero five six three eight. Awesome, that's brave of you. <laughs> uh, you cannot have my cell phone number. <laughs> I'll make. I won't answer it anyway. But <laughs> I don't do phone calls. Um. So I guess my last question for you is: What is the one thing or person every business or business owner needs to help them ensure success? Like, if I said, "What is the absolute one thing I need or person I need to?" to move my business forward, what would your, what would your answer be? Um, can I say outside eyes? Yes, you can absolutely okay. say that. I think that's huge. Outside eyes is, is really my, my best answer to that. And it doesn't mean me. It right. just means people outside advising you, helping you, whether that's, it can be a spouse, it can be a pastor, it can be a mentor, it can mm-hmm. be just outside eyes. Um, because what happens inevitably is People get so ingrained with the day to day and blinders come on. That's mm-hmm. exactly right. And mm-hmm. so they get very tunnel visioned. Um, but outside eyes is the the person that mm-hmm. you need. Every business owner needs outside eyes um, to help them to see new things, new ideas, new ways of, of doing things um, to help them to not drop the ball on things that um, they don't even know are coming at them. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, to solve those problems that they just can't. Yep. seem to get themselves out of. Yep. 
that's exactly right. Yeah, I see that a lot. Yeah, I think outside, I absolutely agree with you. Outside eyes is, is so, so important. Mm -hmm. um, and as an accountant, I think that's like, obviously, I think that's like the most important, right? Because yep. you don't know what you don't know about your numbers. That's right. Um, or your taxes or all those things. Like, how would you, why would you? <laughs> 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 that's not something that needs to be in your tunnel vision, right? Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, outside eyes are so important um, for any business. I completely agree. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. This is very enjoyable. Okay, good. I'm hey, y'all. Thanks for listening. If you found this podcast to be inspiring, helpful, and entertaining, please like and subscribe. This helps us grow the community and reach more people. If you are interested in learning more about this episode's guest or accessing any of the books or other resources mentioned in this episode, be sure to check out the description box below. Until next time, be abundant.